today on Die Trying, I waste a bunch of time. Kind of. You'll see. So today I'm making a big record cabinet display case, I guess, for my friend's store. She sells records and vintage clothing and it's also a salon. Actually, you might remember I made a video a while back about making a desk for her salon. It had the history of salons as the voiceover instead of explaining what I was doing. I know that bothers some of you. And those are actually some of my favorite videos, just me being an idiot. So, deal with it, I guess. Anyway, for this project, I'm using a full 4x8, 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood. I use my track saw instead of bringing it into my table saw because trying to rip a 4x8 sheet of plywood on your table saw is incredibly difficult and annoying, especially when you don't have a big in-feed and out-feed table. Once I had them cut to their dimensions with the track saw, it was time to start assembling some of these pieces. So, like always, I pre-drilled and screwed some boards together. It's hard to get into the details of this because there's a lot going on here, but... The basic idea is it's going to be a very long cabinet and it's going to be able to fit six sets of records. Maybe it was five. I can't remember. We'll, we'll, we'll see when we get towards the end. That's just an edge board for the top to hide the seams of the plywood. Then I glued and nailed that board onto the front that you can see right there. It's got a little lip along the bottom so that the records can lean up against the back and hit that lip so they won't fall out the front. But you're about to see that that board is going to have to get removed. I cut these boards right here and they're going to be the sides of this record case. When you put this up here, it lines up, but now you got, I think this should come all the way over, is all I'm saying. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't want to have to cover up this edge and then there's like this weird separate piece. I think it'd look much nicer if this piece came all the way over. So I'm gonna pull this off and thankfully I have enough wood to do one more. So I tore that off and then finished working on these side pieces. I couldn't tell you what angle that is right there, but the way I got two matching ones was by nailing little boards onto my table saw sled, as you can see right there. Then I can place that square piece of plywood right into that, make my cut, and then do the other side and make my cut and I'll have two matching boards. It's a really fun project because I'd never done anything in this style. And this whole entire project is going to have to come apart because of where I'm going to be bringing it into. There's no way I'm going to be able to get this thing in and out while it's all together. With those boards cut, I could glue and nail on some more edging for the tops. Then I went ahead and pre-drilled and screwed this directly on, making sure everything was nice and square before I attached it. I moved down to the other side and did the same. You can see right there I cut a new piece for that front and now it's long enough to cover up the edge of the side pieces too. Alright, I'm running this board through the table saw with my blade set at an angle to match the angle of the sides where they come down. You'll understand that in a second. I know people get so upset if I put my hand close to the table saw blade and I also understand why you get upset. It's not a good example to set for new people that are learning how to woodwork. Don't do this. It was a mistake that I put my hand that close to the table saw blade and I blurred it out just for you. As you can see right there, I cut that angle so that the piece of wood fits perfectly up into there and I can cut off that little edge that I had left hanging over. Now I'm ripping some more boards. Why am I ripping these ones? Oh, I know. These are going to be the dividers for all the records. I cut two of these spacer pieces of wood so that I could use them to divide out these spaces evenly between all five different spots. Does that make sense? Like you take the spacer and you can clamp it onto the front piece of wood and then you can slide your board up to it and you know it's perfectly straight from there to there. All right, here's the part where I wasted a lot of time, kind of. The original plan 
was to do spindled legs. And I was gonna buy them, but they're super expensive, and this is a good friend of mine, and I didn't want to overcharge her. So I decided I'd try to make them. And I guess that's why this doesn't feel like it was a complete waste of time, because I loved making them, I now have the jig to make them, and I can make them again in the future. But the truth is, this plan wasn't gonna work. Once I flipped it over, I realized, first of all, trying to make 10 legs hit the ground at the same time was gonna be very difficult. And second of all, this thing could hold probably a thousand records on it, and I don't think that these legs are gonna be able to hold up a thousand records. So I got a hold of my friend Molly, I asked her what she thought of this other plan that we had been talking about before. She said she still loved it, so we decided to go with plan B. And luckily in the end, I think she ended up liking that idea better than she liked these, so it worked out fine. And also now I have all these spindle legs that I can use on other projects and they're all pre-made. My original plan was to take double-sided tape and stick this eighth inch plywood to my boards once I had them cut out roughly and then run them through my new router table with a flush trim bit and get four perfectly matching legs. Instead, I cut them out roughly on the bandsaw, then I cut a square side on each one and then I set up another jig on my table saw. So now we can slide this up into the spot and when I run it through the saw, it's secured. But to make sure it's extra secure, I'm gonna just put on these toggle bolt or toggle clamps. Using toggle clamps for this jig really helped. It holds the whole leg down, and as you can see, the side of the plywood runs along the fence, and you just line your board up where you want to make the cut with the other side of the plywood. Toggle clamp it down, and you can run it through your blade, and you'll get a perfectly straight cut along that side of the plywood, which can be whatever angle you decide to, to turn that piece of wood. As you can see. Does that make sense? I think you can tell what I'm doing. Then I switched all the boards around on the piece of plywood and cleaned up the top with the same method as you can see right there. Once I had that done, I used my miter saw to get the cuts on the bottom and the top, and there we go, we had two pieces. Now I'm gonna be attaching these two pieces as you can see, and for that I'm using my, what is that thing called? Biscuit joiner. The biscuit joiner just cuts slots into the side of your wood. It really is just helping all the boards stay aligned with one another. I don't know how much it helps with strength, but it seems like it might help a little bit. I don't know. There's a lot of debate in the woodworking community. <laughs> oh God, communities, huh? Lame. There they are, I glued them up, I clamped them together, I gave it a day or two, then I held them up to my legs because I thought it looked like I was naked with very skinny legs. I'm a child. Then I cut out these little blocks and I pre-drilled them and I gave them a quick sand and then using this other spacer, I could screw these onto the board. This whole cabinet is gonna sit on those but I'm gonna be bolting everything together as you'll see coming up here. I took my straight edge and I marked so I could drill holes into the bottom of this display rack cabinet thing. Then I came in from the inside and pre-drilled holes that I'm going to be screwing that 2x4 right to. I figured this would help support all of the records once they're in there. You'll see coming up soon. And there I am just rounding over all the corners of these legs. And I don't anymore, so I just flip my belt sander up on its side, clamp it to the table and use that. I know, maybe it's not safe, I don't care, it works. I had to figure out a way to clamp these on and into place while I could drill out the holes for them. But I figured it out by just using a clamp and an extending the clamp strength with a piece of wood, as you can see right there. And I drilled my holes out, and then I had to drill a little bit bigger of a hole on the inside so I could put these screw toggle things. What are they called? I could put these T-nuts. T-nuts! Yes, there it is. <laughs> I knew I'd get there. <laughs> so I could put these T-nuts on the inside. When you put them on the inside and then you put the bolt through, and 
pulling them into the wood so there you don't have to risk or worry about them falling out or like getting pulled out see a lot of people put them in the wrong side and then you bolt into it and it'll eventually just pull right out it's kind of useless that way I ended up having to buy shorter bolts for the inside because they were sticking out a little bit too much but once I had them all in I could bring it out into my driveway and make sure it was all gonna stay. and so far I'm real happy with it but I'm gonna be building a bottom shelf for this not only will it be good for displaying things on but it's also really good to help support everything because it just gives it a stretcher along the whole bottom to help stabilize so I took a 1x12 piece of pine from Home Depot and then I took a 2x4, ripped it so that it had square edges on both sides, pre-drilled and screwed it right to the back of this 1x12. That gave it a little lip on the back so that nothing would slide off the back. There's a screw here to stop it from going backwards and we're going to hold it down like so. Then I use this little method right here to just trim these boards at an angle. I really like the style of jig on the table saw. I know a lot of people do it different ways, but this seems to work really well for me. I glued and nailed these onto the side with that nice little taper. I think that looks good how it comes down into the front. Then I gave that whole shelf a quick sand. And now it's time to attach these cool new things that I got. I'm really happy with these things and I highly recommend them if you have to make something that comes apart. So like these little L bracket things, right? So like you'd screw it on in here and then up, see? But there's a little screw that goes in here so that it comes apart. These things are fantastic. I had never seen them before. I, think I saw them in a short maybe. I don't really remember, but either way, it makes it so that you can take apart your uh, corners easily. And uh, I found them very, very useful. Just slides right out and slides back in. So I pushed these legs up against the fence of my table saw, which was locked down. Then I could take this piece of plywood and I could put this also up against my fence. And now I know I have a straight line about 18 inches up on either side of that leg. Then I brought out the shelf and I placed it right on top of those little brackets. And now I'm underneath and I'm screwing the brackets into the bottom of the shelf. Once they were screwed in and I knew they were in the perfect place, then I could take the bolts out that I was talking about earlier and I could remove the shelf if I needed to. All right, I ran out of dowels, so I just used this little thing I got from Harbor Freight to just cut dowels when you need them. I glued and screwed some dowels into all the holes like normal. Then I gave everything a quick sand, and it was time to start staining this. My friend Molly wanted a 70s kind of look, so we went with like an orange color. But I thought it was a little too bright and a little too pink in some spots, so I went over it with a golden oak. Actually, it was colonial maple to start, and then golden oak on top to just darken it up a bit. And I gave the whole thing a few coats of shellac. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I've never made anything in this style, and the fact that it all comes apart, if you make things, you know that's not always easy to make sure it comes apart, and it's also stable when you put it back together. As you can see in these photos, I put four bolts into each side. Three of them go through the cabinet itself, and one of them goes into that long stretcher that was along the bottom to help support all of the weights of the records. Then I could just put that shelf onto the bottom, and... There we go. This thing was all set. Thank you all for your support, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good dream.